In the previous episode, we discovered creationists believe the purpose of Christ is rooted in original sin. Therefore, no animals could have died before the fall, and humans predate the earliest fossils. However, these views do not excuse the natural evidence scattered throughout the planet. Carbon atoms that compose the cells of plants and animals are recycled after these organisms die, incurring numerous and varying fates. For example, 300 million years ago, most of the earth was covered by lush forests. As plant matter died, it was compressed into peat, and over many millions of years of continuous burial, the peat was exposed to increased pressure and temperature until transformed into substances like coal and even petroleum, a complex mixture of hydrogen atoms bound to a carbon skeleton. Carbon atoms can also arrange themselves into numerous allotropes, from the graphite we use in pencils to one of the hardest substances known to man, diamond. Diamonds naturally grow over millions and billions of years under extremes of pressure and temperature found only deep within the Earth's mantle. Therefore, not only does diamond formation need a much longer time frame than the 6,000 years offered by creationists, before the process can even get started, plate tectonic movement would have to bring the organic material from the surface to a depth of 100 miles below the Earth's crust, a process itself requiring millions of years. If the Earth was recently formed, the easiest explanation for all of this evidence might be that God simply placed all the oil and the diamonds within the newly created Earth. And since God can do anything, perhaps the planet did not begin as a molten ball of rock, metals and minerals, but instead created with the mountain ranges and other geologic structures already preformed by the seventh day of creation, giving the Earth only the appearance of age. But that would be like saying, all the ancient looking fossils we find scattered throughout the Earth were placed there during the creation as well. So then, did the dinosaurs really exist? Maybe God gave us these bones to reconstruct for our amusement, just like he gave us the oil to someday run our cars, coal to generate electricity, and diamonds for something pretty to give each other. Although this version of reality is not shared among the majority of creationists, many similar arguments have been used to rationalize the natural evidence with a young earth view. Almost everyone understands that at one time dinosaurs did exist, but according to creationists, their sudden disappearance and the formation of such natural wonders as the Grand Canyon are able to be explained by the same solitary event, the Flood. Genesis chapter 1 verse 29 states, God initially created all animals to be herbivores. This suggests lions, sharks, and even the largest carnivorous animal, the Tyrannosaurus rex, were all once plant eaters. God finally allows the eating of meat after Noah sets the animals free from the ark in Genesis chapter 9 verse 3, when God states, Everything that lives and moves will be food for you. Just as I gave you the green plants, now I give you everything. Keep in mind there was 1,556 years from Adam to Noah, during which time all animals that today we classify as carnivores would have only eaten plants. But could this really be true? Every characteristic of carnivores, from their razor-sharp claws, to their flesh-shearing teeth, and powerful bone-crushing jaws, are instrumental in their ability to obtain and consume flesh. On the other hand, herbivores such as the horse have flat grinding teeth used for pulverizing plant material. Carnivores lack the proper enzymes and bacteria in their gastrointestinal system to digest cellulose. Even humans lack these enzymes, which is the reason that if you've not thoroughly chewed certain vegetables like corn, you might discover them the next day after you've gone to the bathroom. However, animals like the cow have several stomachs used for breaking down and digesting fibrous material. Herbivores have a longer gastrointestinal tract to keep food inside them for as long as possible in order for specialized intestinal bacteria to have enough time to break down cellulose. There are even certain animals with specialized organs, for example, the gizzard found in birds, reptiles, fish, and certain insects. As we can see, there are several major anatomical and physiological differences between herbivores and carnivores, 
If God initially created the T-Rex to eat vegetation, it would make sense for God to have given this animal the same anatomical and physiological tools as all the other herbivores to best obtain and digest its alleged natural diet. However, animals that transitioned from plant eaters into meat eaters did not convert their flat grinding teeth to sharp cutting teeth or reduce their multiple stomachs into just a single stomach over the course of a few thousand years, as the Bible seems to suggest. In fact, if adaptations on such a scale were really to have taken place, it would require millions of years, a time frame incongruent with the young Earth view. By the creation of both all the creatures that move along the ground and man on the sixth day, Genesis chapter 1 verse 24 through 26 suggests humans and dinosaurs coexisted. However, what would account for only their extinction and not ours? The Bible suggests a worldwide flood during the age of Noah is responsible. If this is true, we would expect to find not only every dinosaur fossil, but all fossils along the same sedimentary layer of rock across the entire world. Such a catastrophe should leave some proof of its destruction, but we see no evidence of death on such a massive scale. In fact, fossils are arranged in order of epochs of time, ascending in complexity and evenly distributed throughout the geological column. But aside from supporting thousands of tons of dinosaurs within the wooden ark, there is still the question of how the animals survived after the flood water receded. If water lasted 150 days upon the earth, as we are told in Genesis 7, we would expect the world to have greatly changed once the flood was over. Much of the plant life would have died off, leaving little for the herbivores to eat. Furthermore, the only dining options for the carnivorous animals would have been their fellow castaways. Assuming the story of the flood is true, it is easy to understand the reason why the dinosaurs became extinct might have been due to the climate change, diminished food supply, or other environmental factors. But what about the dinosaurs that lived in the water? Apparently, since fish and other aquatic mammals and reptiles are able to swim, there is no need to rescue them from the flood. Therefore, shouldn't we still see the oceans teeming with dinosaurs and other prehistoric animals, even though the dinosaurs on the land became extinct? Understandably, the flood would have wiped out the food supply or changed the environment on the surface, but nothing would have changed in the oceans where an abundant supply of algae, plants, fish, and other animals still remained for the aquatic dinosaurs to eat. The aquatic reptiles known to inhabit the oceans ranged in size and shape, comparable to many varieties of aquatic mammals that still inhabit the waters, such as sea lions, walruses, dolphins, orcas, and whales. In fact, the largest aquatic mammal, the whale, is much bigger than the largest aquatic dinosaur. Therefore, whatever environmental influences the flood had on the gigantic dinosaurs of the surface could not have had the same impact on the animals in the water. There is no way to explain the selective extinction of the aquatic dinosaurs and the survival of all other aquatic ocean mammals that allegedly shared the waters. In fact, the only way to explain this discrepancy is through what the science of evolution tells us, that the extinction of the dinosaurs 65 million years ago gave mammals the opportunity to gain dominance over the earth and the oceans. Please continue to part two of this episode where we will conclude our discussion on Pangaea, plate tectonics, and the flood, as well as examine the most poignant evidence that shows, without question, the earth and the universe are indeed billions of years old. <laughs>